Hi guys, my name is Lucia and welcome back to another video in my series Make Up Your Mind where I talk about makeup related things I have made my mind up about. If you've missed any video in the series, I will link my playlist down below. A couple months ago, probably four or five months ago, I made a video in the series called Products I'm Shocked Were Ever Made and I asked you guys if you wanted a part two and a ton of you said yes, so I'm finally here to bring that back for you. I will link the original video down below in case you missed it. I just want to put a disclaimer because I know a lot of people in that video were getting very mad that I had things to say about makeup and I just want to remind you that it's just makeup. It is not that deep. I just like to pick out some stuff that I find either gimmicky or quite frankly just shocking and talk to you about it, but it's not that deep. I'm not that bothered about it. You shouldn't be that bothered about it. Also, real quick before I start, the wind is rattling my entire dorm building right now, so if you hear a howling sound, it is literally the wind. I'm sorry, there's nothing I can do about it. The first thing is something a ton of you guys tagged me in on Instagram and a ton of you guys have been asking me to talk about, and that is the Icy Betch palette. Yes, the Icy Betch palette, the whole drama. If you were not familiar, Tarte released the Icy Betch palette prank on April Fools a year ago where they were supposedly coming out with a blue and green palette. Everyone was super excited. Then they said, ha, gotcha, April Fools joke. And everyone was like, um, how is that a joke? We actually wanted that palette. I talked a lot about this on my channel because I just thought it was so not funny and it was ridiculous. I even made an entire dupe palette with Coastal Scents shadows. I will link that video down below in which I talked about that palette. Along with me, a lot of other people made dupes of that palette and some actual brands either made dupes or just made some green and blue palettes. And we've been seeing a good amount of blue and green palettes on the market recently. A year ago when this palette came out but it was a joke. I tried to find an actual palette that was already made that could dupe this and I couldn't. And now if you go on the market and you look for green and blue palettes, they do exist. So in a way, that joke kind of started something within the makeup community where customers were saying, we want to be listened to, you clearly have no idea what we want, and other brands started to listen. But Tarte just, poor Tarte, I don't know what's going on in the Tarte office, but they still don't understand us. They still don't get us. This is the palette that they just came out with. It is one year later. First of all, can we just talk about that? I guess they were trying to do like, oh, well, remember that joke we made? Well, here's an actual palette around that joke. This is not the palette that everyone went crazy over and that everyone wanted. This is a strangely laid out palette that has a gigantic frosty white highlighter that you can only use if you're super pale and all that space could have been used for more green and blue shadows, but it wasn't. If you go to the YouTube comments on the Tarte YouTube video where they're using this palette, basically every comment is either saying, why are you so late? Or why didn't you release the original palette that we all wanted. Now in terms of the quality, this is a lesser priced palette, but it's supposed to have the Amazonian clay formula, which is supposed to be high quality. I have never owned a Tarte palette, and I have used my friend's Tarte palettes, and I haven't really loved the formula. It's not really for me. If you're worried about the formula, I'm assuming this is probably going to be a rather good formula. I just don't understand why they waited so long, and why they didn't just use the original palette. I mean, everything about the original palette was awesome. The layout was awesome. The size was awesome. Maybe they wanted to make a palette that was a little bit cheaper, but putting in that highlight, it just, first of all, it makes it so that this is targeted specifically for super light skin tones, which is really frustrating because everything is targeted for super light skin tones, and we should be making palettes that are more universal, and it just feels like a cop-out. It feels like even after their customers said, we want a green and blue palette, they still couldn't make one without taking up a ton of space with a shade that isn't green or blue. They were still scared that people would say, oh, there's too much color in that. So instead they just wasted a ton of space with a highlighter that super isn't necessary. And don't get me wrong, they could have had a smaller eyeshadow shade with that highlighter and I think that would have been fine, but to take up all that room with that highlighter just feels like such a cop out to me. All in all, this one just confuses me. Let me know what you guys think. I'm super interested to hear your thoughts on this. This is just very shocking to me and when I started to get tags from you guys on Instagram about this, I was just like, I'm sorry, what? Like, 
I'm confused. Like, what's what's going on, Tart? What are you doing? Like, still one year later, what are you doing? The next thing I want to talk about was a big trend in the makeup community for about six months and I never understood it and that is the rainbow highlight craze. This started with the brand Bitter Lace Beauty. They sold the original highlighter that was a rainbow on Etsy and the internet just exploded and all these other brands started to release rainbow highlights which before I talk about the actual highlight I just want to say it takes time to make a product. So even though I'm saying oh the icy bitch why did it come out a year later I'm not saying that you should just release a product the second you get the idea it does take time to make but when it came to the rainbow highlight by the time other brands caught on and they were releasing rainbow highlights the fad was over because it didn't last very long the whole trend I really think it only lasted a few months before the majority of people were over it but other brands started to release them like Wet n Wild and other drugstore brands that thought, oh, we can sell this, you know, gimmicky thing that's in right now for cheap. That was kind of weird that the phase ended, but then all these other brands were still trying to keep up, even though it was kind of done. But back to the actual product. I just don't understand this one, and I have seen people apply it, and you can make it look nice. The thing that gets me is the blue. The blue is the reason I don't like this highlighter because when you watch reviews of this, first of all, you definitely can take a dense brush and actually make it look like a rainbow. Jeffree Star has a review of the original Bitter Lace highlighter and he takes a dense brush and he goes like this and it actually does look like a rainbow. But that's not necessarily a good thing, even though the product might work in terms of looking like a rainbow. You have these different colors and then there's just this blue. And when you put blue on your skin, especially that dark blue, you're gonna look like you have a bruise. And I know people use duochrome blue highlighters and that's a little different because there's a shift, but this is actually blue pigmentation that you're putting on your cheekbones and it just makes you look kind of ill, like you got punched in the face. I also saw Jeffree Star in that video swirled the brush around the highlighter and then put it on his cheeks. And the same thing, it had a pretty gold hue with just this undertone of blue. So even though the tone of the highlighter was kind of gold and nice, you had this weird bruise-like undertone of it that just made it look so strange and bad. I never understood this one. I get the people want colorful highlighters and duochrome highlighters, but putting them all in one pan, I don't know. Just in general, I don't love when different things are in one pan, like when you have bronzer and highlighter in one pan, or when you have different blush colors in one pan. I just don't think that that ever works. And yeah, it was very interesting that this was such a big trend, and then it really just died. Like, it got super, super hyped, and it was super popular, and then just as quickly as it came, it went away and that was it. Next I want to talk about something that I swore was not on the market anymore and I am shocked to see that it actually still is but I'm also just shocked that this product was ever made. This is the Maybelline Eye Studio Brow Drama Sculpting Brow Gel. I remember when this came out and I remember the reviews and the thing about this product it's not so bad it's not so weird like some of the products I mentioned in these videos but the thing that gets me is it's a brow gel with a circular ball on the end. What? I just, I just don't get this product at all. And I remember the reviews. I remember so many people being like, what is this ball? Like, who came up with this? Because if you don't have really thick eyebrows, it's going to get product on your actual skin. Like, that ball is not going just in your eyebrows. And even if you're like me and you do have really thick eyebrows, how is that helpful? Like, when you get to the tail end of your brow, what are you supposed to do? I even saw some people cutting off the ball and I remember the people who did that said the product was way better when they cut it off. If you have to cut something off of a wand in order to make it right, then why was it ever on the wand in the first place? Another complaint, because I was just reading reviews on the Maybelline website, and a lot of people were saying that the actual product is really dry, like the wand doesn't pick up anything and it feels like the product is dried out. So all in all, this was just a strange one. I would just love to have been in that room and to understand why there is this ball on the wand because it just doesn't make sense and it makes me so mad and I just want to know like 
why? Like, wh what, why would, why did you think that was a good idea? Like, please tell me. Next, I want to talk about a throwback gimmick product. This came out in 2010, and I want to talk about this, and then I want to compare it to a more recent gimmick product. This is the L'Oreal True Match Roller Foundation. It came out, like I said, in 2010. It was a cream foundation in a compact form, and it came with this sponge that was literally like a roller paint sponge, like how you paint your house. And the idea was that you put the sponge in the makeup and you paint your face with it. I thought maybe this had come out before beauty blenders, like maybe the sponge wasn't a thing that was being used a lot, but I looked it up and beauty blenders came out in 2007. So they were still fairly new to the makeup industry. It was only three years, but that's not that new. Like three years is a long time to get acquainted with a new tool. And I just think this is such a strange concept. I don't think this would ever come out right now, but then again, there are other gimmicks that are probably just as bad. What confuses me is just why you would want to do this. Like, why would you want to paint on your makeup like it was literally a canvas? It's just not an appealing image to me. Another thing is that this product was $15 in 2010, which was nine years ago. And you know, makeup prices have slowly been creeping up there. But the fact that this was $15 that long ago, that's shocking to me. That really shows that L'Oreal has been one of the brands for a long time that costs the most at the drugstore. And also there's barely any product in this. I just cannot believe this was ever made. And something that I am shocked that happened more recently and the thing I want to end this video with is the silicone makeup sponge, which was a big trend in 2016. I never understood it. And to this day, I am so confused. If you are not aware, the silicone makeup sponge was exactly what it sounds like. It's not a sponge. It's just a silicone egg-shaped thing that people would use to press in their makeup. I found this article called Why You Won't Find Silicone Makeup Sponges in a Professional Makeup Artist Kit and their reasons, which are super, super spot on, which is why I wanted to share it with you was, one, they suck at blending because it's so true. Two, their non-porous surface is actually a disadvantage. When you use a makeup sponge, it sucks up some of the product so that you don't have all this excess product, but silicone isn't gonna suck up any of that product, so you're just gonna have so much product that isn't blending in very well, and it just is a mess. And the third thing is that they don't absorb water, so if you have a foundation that dries really quickly, your actual application thing that you're using to apply it isn't keeping the foundation moist. Ugh, I hate that word. Anyway, so you have to work really hard to blend it in or like swipe it around. And it was just super weird, like people holding these silicone sponges, it's not a nice thing to hold. It just doesn't work. They just don't blend well. And there was a whole trend of people using anything to blend in their makeup just to get views. Like people were using condoms, people were using fruit. It it was just super strange, but those were more jokes. This is like actually a thing that a ton of people spend money on and wanted to try and thought was good, and it just wasn't. And I'm so glad that phase is gone, but I'm really shocked that that was ever a trend because it just is so weird to me. All right, guys, that is everything for this video. Let me know if you want a part three of this. I can definitely do another one in the future. And tell me down below some other products that you are shocked were ever made. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.